Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to a yet another uh, session on Android automation testing with APM and Ultimate, and we have uh, Ru with us. Hi everyone. <clears throat> uh, we are we are really glad to have uh, Ru here with us today. Thank you and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I'll start with a quick introduction about myself so that you understand why I'm talking about uh, um, game automation. Um, I've been a tester since 2002, and I think my first project was. Uh, testing a mobile app. And since then, um, most like most of those 20 years have been somehow related to a mobile um, project or mobile testing, mobile automation. And in the last few years, over six years, um, I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, specifically mobile game automation and game, game testing in general. Um, and uh, I'm also one of the main contributors for this Altunity um, tester tool, which is an open source tool for um, game automation, specifically for Unity. <clears throat> and my talk is going to uh, show the use of this Altunity tester alongside Appium for um, uh, doing game game automation. I'll, I'll, I'll show a little bit of of how that happens with a, with a real game and a real Android device. Uh, <clears throat> my <clears throat> kind of journey uh, towards game, game development happened uh, in Helsinki. I'm based in Helsinki um, and my company where I'm one of the founding members, Altom, is originally from Romania, but we have offices here in Finland. Um, and in Helsinki, I started working with uh, uh, a company a while ago, um, called Bitbar. They are still um, <laughs> active, but they've been since acquired by Smart Bear. But they offer um, access to devices, real mobile uh, Android and iOS devices in the cloud where you can run, either run like um, your application and test it uh, remotely, or you can run automated tests, mostly via Appium, which is I think the, the most common platform for doing cross-platform automation for mobile. So I started working with them because they had a few clients that were developing mobile games and wanted to um, test their games on using automation and specifically Appium on uh, devices in the cloud. <clears throat> and they were running into some problems um, because Appium could only help them so much. And this is what I'm gonna try to show you here with this uh, presentation. What are the limitations that we have and what are the solutions that we, we um, have access to at the moment for game automation? So <clears throat> most mobile games and games in general um, are not, are built using a so-called game engine. My talk is focused specifically on Unity, which is a game engine that uh, where you, that offers a lot of kind of built-in elements for uh, developing a game. You have a lot of the physics world already built in. You have a lot of good character development support, character animations, and so on. And you write your 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 uh, game code in uh, one single language in C sharp in Unity's case. You build your game within the Unity editor. You can test it within the Unity editor, and then you can export it on many different platforms from consoles to PC and mobile as well, both iOS and, and Android. And the problem with that is that while it's very convenient to have this cross-platform tool, you also um, have the inconvenience of uh, the, the not having access with uh, tools like Appium to the game objects that are coming from within the uh, game engine. And <clears throat> I'll try to show an example of this. Uh, we have, I have here, um, Okay, it says that my screen sharing is paused. I wonder why. Maybe I need to stop the... Uh, is it? Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is something that... Uh, okay, is, is does this work now? Can you see the Unity, the Altec Tacto? I guess this is good now. Uh, we can see your... Uh, yeah, uh, we can see your presentation. Uh, can you share it again? Make it full screen now? Uh, but I <clears throat> I was hoping, oh, so you don't see the full screen. Okay, I need to share again then, I think. Yeah. Uh, one second, I will share. I think I shared probably not the um, full screen, but just the, okay. So can you now see the- Yeah, please. Uh, full screen. Okay, the, the, the uh, alt tic-tac-toe game. Correct. Then. Okay. Good. Sorry about that. 
Um, so this is um, uh, the Unity editor. This is the main uh, kind of the, uh, environment where you would build your game. And this is one of the games that we use as an example for uh, for teaching. Um, it's a very simple tic-tac-toe game. I will um, press the play button here so that we can actually play the game. And you can do this with, with all of the games. You can actually run them and play them within the Unity editor without having to uh, install them on a target platform. <clears throat> so this is the game in, in action. And this is how the game is built. We have all these elements here. We have the logo, some buttons. This is how they are arranged in the uh, game. And this is the hierarchy of elements that we have from uh, the Unity editor. It's a bit small, but hopefully if they're not that important in, in detail what they are. Just that, just like we can see in, uh, in, 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 for example, in Chrome, in the development tools, the DOM elements, this is how we see the, the game elements in Unity. And the game is very simple. We can click play now and, and you know, just play a tic-tac-toe game. Uh, we could restart it, we could go back. And um, there's another button here that's called share. If I click it here, uh, nothing actually happens within the Unity editor. And this is one of those things where we just see something in the console, but actually this is a button that on, an, on a real device would open a dialogue, uh, like the native share dialogue that you would have, or you could share this application to or via Bluetooth or messages or something like this. But because this is a platform specific uh, feature, we won't see it within the Unity editor. Um, <clears throat> so this is the point where we would try it on an actual platform. Um, I will stop the, the playtime now and I'll show you. So if we wanted to build this in, from Unity on any of these platforms, we could choose one of those and then just click build and it would create the build for, for iOS or for Xbox or and so on. Um, but now I've already uh, used Android and I wanna show you the game also running on a real Android device. I won't do the build now, but basically this creates a, an APK, which is just like any other mobile app except um, you know it's a it's a game but we can use um, in this case I was going to show it by using the Appium in, uh, inspector just to install this APK on the phone and I have um, let me just open it here um, <clears throat> the visor app to try to show you also the mobile phone. I have the same phone over here on my desk connected to my Mac, but um, just to kind of see it better here, I, so, you know, if I do something here, it's gonna show up on the same, uh, in this Visor app. So I will start the session uh, with Appium Inspector that should install the application. We should see it here soon, installed out tic-tac-toe. There it is, and it should start it and uh, show us, uh, allow us to inspect it like we would with Appium. So I have Appium kind of running here in a, in a terminal already, the Appium server. So, okay, we see the exact same app. I can play it here. And of course, uh, this is happening on the, on the device as well. Um, same, same thing. The only difference here is that when I click the share button, this actually opens this native dialogue that I explained earlier and I can click back and go back to it. So now if we try to inspect this app, here is where the, the tricky part comes. So far, this looks like any other Android app, but if I try to kind of drill down to find the objects, this is the kind of the, <laughs> the only object that I see. It's a so-called game view, an Android view, uh, that contains all of the exported Unity uh, objects. So I don't have any access to any of these elements over here. What I would want to, and from, a, from an automation point of view, what I would like to interact with is all of these buttons that we also see over here in, in Unity. But from the inspector, we, we, this is a, basically a black box. But on the other hand, what is not a black box is the uh, uh, native dialogue here. If I refresh the inspector, this will actually show all of the native elements in, uh, you know, these we can, we can use with Appium and we could interact with them and assert on them. So this part that wasn't available in the Unity editor is available using uh, Appium. So <clears throat> if I go back to the, to the presentation, I will just put this again in slideshow. Um, but with with the with the game companies that were trying to run automation with Appium in uh, on devices in the cloud, 
Well, we, we tried a few approaches and one of them was with image recognition, but we, it didn't really work the way we, or didn't have the flexibility and the speed that we wanted. So what we were looking for was a solution that would give us access to this structure, to this hierarchy of game objects they are called the Unity, on the device so we can access them from the code. And uh, when we started working on the Ultimate Tester tool that I will show, we realized that the moment we add a game object here in the in the um, uh, scene of Unity in within the game this knows everything about all of the other objects that are in there. So if we could open, if this object here could open a, a connection to the game as like a, like a back door, then from the tests, we could basically, uh, from a script, uh, we could have uh, an Altunity driver, we call it, that would connect to this back door and would be able to interact with any of the elements. So just like the Appium driver, we would have an Altunity driver that could then load a specific level, uh, find objects with different locators, and then interact with them. So this is the solution that we built, and I uh, have the link over here, and I'll share it uh, later on, or we'll, we'll, we'll look at this later on as well. It supports C Sharp and Java and Python, and I'm going to try now to show you what it would mean to actually write a couple of Python tests for, for this. Um, <clears throat> so within Unity, we would need to install a package that would add that object uh, to the to the game it's a package that you could import like you import a lot of any a lot of other unity plugins it's a very typical way of adding functionality to your game um, and that gives us access to a few extra settings like we saw the one for to, for building the android we have here a build button that would actually give us uh, same same game the exact same apk and the same game but it would also have uh, this little object inserted in there This um, that would allow us from the scripts to connect to the game and inspect the elements. So um, I already have another uh, application built um, and I have set up here a very simple project in Python that uses uh, PyTest to try to run a couple of tests that use both the Appium driver and the Alt Unity driver. So um, this is a bit annoying. I have the controls here, so I need to move this a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so I have, uh, because we're using PyTest, we have a fixture that provides uh, the drivers. This provides, uh, sets up the, the uh, Appium driver, like I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, the only thing special here is that we use the uh, APK is the instrumented one, so the one that has this little <laughs> thing inside it. And then we also have an um, Alt Unity driver that um, is created in conf test, and they are available for our test over here. Um, the test does nothing yet, so I will just start it in debug and we'll stop here on this breakpoint and we can look at the um, at the game on the device let's see and then try to write a couple of tests for this uh game okay the application is now installed um and <clears throat> it looks basically exactly the same as before um the only difference is that we have this little object over here if we click on it it's going to tell us that there's a client connected. This is the uh, instrumented part that gives us uh, a connection to uh, the Unity elements through the Alt Unity driver. And assuming that we want to now write some tests that would, for example, first find the play button or make sure that it's on the page, then click on this one to show the shared dialogue, um, and then just click back to close it. Uh, we would have to kind of be mindful of which driver we use. So first for the play button, we would use the alt unity driver because it's a unity element and we would do find or wait for object, for example, wait for object by name. In this case, we can, we can use by name. We have a few other locators and the name for this, we get it from the uh, unity editor. This one is called play button over here. So we can put that in there. We could also copy the same thing and uh, wait for the, let me put this back, wait for the share button instead of play. I remember that that's the name of it. And with this one, we could also tap on it once we find it. 
And now if when we tap the share button, this would open the, this dialog. And this is a dialog that is native for which we would actually have to use the Appium driver this time. And we could use find element here. I will um, kind of copy this because I have already saved it. So we don't need to spend time trying to inspect it. So <clears throat> this would basically wait to find this dialog when it's open. And we could have another step just to kind of show the integration with native um, uh, actions. We could, uh, with the Appium driver, click back so that we use this Android back button that is specific for, for Android. So I could, um, I will stop this and restart the test now. And we can, we should see it um, running in, uh, also in debug. So I'll try to do this step by step. I see that we have a couple of questions, but this is the kind of the last thing that I will show because we have uh, just quite little time left. So I will look at them in uh, just a moment. All right, so uh, we are here, we are waiting to see the play button. If I go over this, okay, the play button was found, then it should look for the share button and tap on it. So it found the share button, tapped on it. Now we're moving on to the Appium driver that should look for this element and then hopefully click back for the Android. And uh, this is the, the whole test. So um, <clears throat> very short demo, but this kind of shows the, the use of both of the drivers based on the need. Um, we, could, we could switch between native elements and, and Unity elements quite nicely in a test and, and uh, uh, seamlessly interact with the, with the application and, and the game. And we could do a lot of functional um, automation this way. Um, <clears throat> I didn't have any other, this was my, my uh, main slides. I, I'll leave this here for a bit if you wanna check the link. And um, I will see what questions we had here. Okay. So someone, uh, somebody is asking, is there any other way to get properties or only uh, via Unity, lo the locators? Uh, Unity is the main, the Unity editor is the main way. We also are working on an inspector that is similar to the one uh, uh, that Appium has, but it's, uh, that one is not open source. And it's also something that you don't necessarily need, but it's something that uh, uh, you, it can ease your uh, development work. But um, Unity Editor works quite well for, for this purpose, at least. Hopefully this answers the question. Um, there's another question that says, I still have a little bit of time. How much effort does it take from the developer side to add this in a build? Um, it's, it's really, um, it, it really doesn't take, it. We, we can, you can add that as part of your build. It's just a one line command in most cases. So it doesn't take a lot of effort from a developer's time to, to build this. Uh, okay, I don't know if we, do we have, I, I think um, we are kind of out of time at the Absolutely. moment. And uh, let's, it's time to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, it, it's really a nice uh, to get your experience, uh, Ruth. Thank you so much for that.